were not born with wings, we've always had the dream to fly. How powerful was that dream that we, in universal harmony, found a way to invent an instrument to build our own wings to fly. The origins of the planes, Austria is actually a small country. We have history, like for example, in classical music that is known everywhere in the world, like Mozart. We've had crazy lack of progress in the legacy GA business. In order to go anywhere, whether it's one inch or one mile, you have to take some risk. Somebody needs to do it. As good as legacy engines have treated us, we can do better. And somebody has to be first. The DNA of Diamond has set by the original founder of the company. These are the things we are going to bake into every single airplane. That all doesn't come without some risk. Diamond's always been right at the front edge of that. They're not afraid of being first. This is not some weird science project of some wild-haired professor inventor in some barn someplace that, look at this, I've invented this new contraption. This is what we need. People, they used to look at it with a very skeptical eye. Not that way anymore. They want it. Most of the technology that exists in aviation sources from the 40s and 50s in terms of its original design that we're still flying today. It's a testament to how good they are that they last that long, but the design characteristics are of that era. Cars didn't have seat belts standard until 1959. So imagine people of that era were designing aircraft safety with very little experience of what that would look like. Christian Dries, the founder of the company, he had a lot of his own personal experiences with general aviation airplanes. Few of those involved some incidents that he was extraordinarily fortunate to have survived. He said, if I'm going to do this, what can I do different to an industry that had just ignored the things that the automotive industry focused on for many decades? We didn't have very safe cars in the 50s, 60s, even into the 70s in some cases. That safety culture started to build on the automotive side and because of his involvement in the automotive industry, why can't we bring some of these ideas and concepts into general aviation? Nobody's really ever done it. So he said, that's what we're going to do. Christian Dries said, you know, if you want to build a really great airplane, you start with a really great wing. But in that era, no one was designing new airplanes because the industry had completely gone off the sales cliff in 1980. So when Diamond came along, he saw the potential for what was really happening in aviation, and that was the confluence of composite airframe technology with computers. A modern aviation company to provide entry-level aircraft for personal use, training use, starting with small and going to larger. But he had to start at a time when no one was doing it. And in that era, where would you turn to find the expertise to build composite certificated airplanes if no one had done it? Well, he turned to a motor glider company. Those engineers knew everything about building beautiful, sleek, composite aircraft wings. The original aircraft that was purchased, the company HOAC, which later became Demona, is the H-36 motor glider. The basis of the design of the DA-20 was based on that motor glider. Christian Dries went to those engineers and he said, okay, that just got us going. Now it's time to implement my vision. 
which is I want to build the world's safest, most efficient aircraft. And you have free reign to design it exactly to that purpose. Those engineers had the freedom to look at how do you solve problems of airplanes? I think what they did in that moment was the most important thing that aviation has seen. They went back and analyzed exactly what caused problems and safety issues with aircraft. They analyzed all the accidents, put them into categories. What they learned were stall spin accidents, fire and fuel containment, loss of control, crosswinds, occupant protection concepts, which were not part of the 50s design era. Then they pulled out a clean sheet of paper. In each category, they took a fresh look, created ideas, brainstormed what could be done, and settled on a design concept. They created a wing system that would be used on all the airplanes that doesn't stall and spin. Only needed one spar, but they built two so they could get rid of fires and aircraft. So with the goal of building the world's safest, most efficient aircraft line and using it as a foundation to go from single to twin to bigger cabins, this was all part of the original vision that Christian Dries had. The SUV of the air concept, all you have to do is look on the roads everywhere you see. That is predominantly what people want to drive around in because of the flexibility and the utility why not take that up into the air? This is where the idea started from. Doing a DA-50 means, hey, we need more space. We need something really with more ramp appeal. We wanted to have this diamond factor as well, but it has to be safe. A lot of times the design starts on a napkin <laughs> over conversation, and it evolves from there until you have the blueprints and the proof of concept and the first production aircraft. It's a constant evolution. I always wanted to be a metal worker. Sometimes it turns out differently. I was working as an intern here, doing pure production work. And then I was getting more and more deeper in aviation study. For my whole life, I was always impassioned with this company. I was doing an intern, doing laminating in the workshop, doing final assembly here in the plant. And then I got the unique chance to create an aircraft. The DA-50 was my diploma thesis, so I was pretty excited that I had the chance at Diamond to realize an aircraft, because only a few people in the world have the possibility to design their own aircraft. We started from scratch with hand sketches. Christian was an innovator. He was always motivating us to make something which is good, make it perfect. We are also pilots. When we were discussing, it mostly ends up that we say, let's see aircraft, let's go flying to understand what we are talking about. That we can always test at all time how it really feels in reality. Here at Diamond Austria, we're having nearly 800 people working from 28 different nationalities. We have more than 100 engineers. We are a very big international family here. I heard about the diamond, about the high level of the engineering and design. I'm an aerospace engineer. I was so inspired and I decided to apply. We do the design. From the very first idea, you already think about active and passive safety. We're the best in safety record. We have everywhere the safety included. We are doing fail-safe design in the wings, double shielded tanks, monocoque cabin, high absorbing roll bar, absorbing elements below the seats airbags in the seat belts. It's everything safety. The customer don't see it, but when he would need it, he has it. When we developed it, we didn't know about the sound. You see in the calculation just the performance and what the surface can do for this airplane. Then after the first few flights, we heard, hmm, this is a nice sound. It's like a signature of this airplane. And now, if I walk, for example, in the city, I hear the sound, okay, this is our D-50 landing. This development always kept not only the safety, but the elegance. Maybe the elegance that you would think of when thinking of Vienna with classical music. It's a city full of history, and Diamond is as well a company full of history. And now our biggest milestone, I would say, 
actually we completed our composition. It's a symphony orchestra. Everyone is making his own sound and a footprint in the aviation. So, and we're very proud of it. It's now complete, absolutely, with the DA-15. We love to be proud of what we own. People don't want to drive ugly cars. They don't want to live in an ugly house. They don't want to fly ugly planes. This airplane, it is the WOW airplane. When I think of the 50, I think of beast mode. This aircraft feels aggressive, but has that look of like an American muscle car. It's got the big engine on the nose, it's gone with a matte finish on it with red accents, and it really does add to the drama of this aircraft. It looks fast. It really looks fast. Makes you think of Top Gun or of uh, James Bond movies. Actually, I think even Tom Cruise would give it a go. <laughs> you can see from the front we have those two big air scoops, black nose, large propeller, very beautiful tail. The elegancy of the lines poses them all into a good combination of style and aggressiveness. Everything just looks very aggressive and very tough, which I think is a bit of a departure for Diamond. They're very smooth and elegant and classy, typically. But the DA-50 looks mean. It looks tough. It stands up, tall and proud. It just has a nobility look to it. Absolutely ramp appeal. got that really cool, mean look, that tall tail, that long wing, that big cowl up front, and that menacing propeller on the front of the airplane. A muscle car driver would really appreciate it. Lots of aircraft designers will tell you that for an airplane to fly good, it has to look good. The ramp presence is not apparent by looking at a piece of paper with some specifications on it. If you looked at the specifications of a Maserati, you wouldn't get that understanding of what that really means until you walk up to it and get in it and, and drive it. And I think the same thing goes for the DA-50. You stop and you say, wow. Like, that's a beautiful airplane. It feels like a luxury SUV with wings. The elegance of a sports car combined with the versatility of an SUV. It really channels all of your attention. Just extremely good looking. The nose is very nice with the propeller and it's so beautiful. It's probably close to a, to a silver Aston Martin, yes. And not only delivering safe planes, but really having so sexy looking planes. Sexy. <laughs> but we don't tell this, right? There is an old saying that an airplane flies like it looks, and I think that's especially true for the DA-50. Fundamentally, flying diamonds is, is basically like wearing wings. It's pretty spectacular. Diamonds are they're the best in the air. They love to fly, and people love to fly them. It's not a sit in and let the airplane fly you. What you'll do, this is a go up and enjoy it. The way it accelerates, but then when you come at that point of rotation, and just you begin to realize it's just there when you when you pull back that that really stable platform, which is so intuitive to fly. Feeling is very fine. Me as a production test pilot, I take the aircraft to all sides of the foreman's envelope. So we take it on the high-speed flight regime, we take it on the low-speed flight regime, and we evaluate the characteristics at every point of the envelope. Yeah, I was just astonished. I mean, it's a very nice handling characteristics given by the great uh, adjustment of all the uh, control surfaces. Just a thrilling aircraft to fly. Put a lot of effort into matching the aerodynamic components with the control characteristics. Fairly large aircraft, it still gives you this kind of feeling of speed. So as soon as you lift off the runway, you just feel, I'm fast, you know. Man, I'm fast. It gives you a speedy feeling, but also with a certain amount of elegance. When you're maneuvering in this airplane, it's got a really rock solid feel. You can stand the airplane on a wingtip. It's wonderful to turn around a point and with the stick and rudder controls, it really becomes a pilot's aircraft. 
the intuitiveness of the center stick is definitely a unique feature. Having the model of a 3D space in your head, you can just tell the center stick where you want to go and the aircraft will do it, unlike, for example, a side stick. With the DA50, I think all of us realize flying it, it feels really natural. You feel one with the aircraft rather quickly. The best moment, I would say, in the aircraft is just the landing. It's always smooth. Doing a bad landing in a DA50 is close to impossible because it just flies so well and as soon as you fly it close to the ground it actually takes up the nose a bit up by itself and you will nearly always do a main gear touchdown. It's actually even pleasant to land in crosswind conditions. A very wide track of the landing gear as you can see they're mounted fairly outward on the wing. That also makes great landing and handling characteristics on ground. Yeah, with the DA50, the first landing, basically all of us nailed it, which is not that common for the first landing in a new airplane. But the trailing landing gear and also the handling, we could all achieve that, that the first landing was already a success. Also have way more confidence than in a yoke or in a side stick plane because you just have better feedback. If conditions are not ideal, you really have an extra advantage. There's no bouncing, not too much flare. Every landing is silky smooth, and landing is where being a pilot really comes down to your skill and your experience, and the DA-50 makes that very easy. Because the airplane is so easy to fly, because it's so natural, you just keep thinking, you know, my landings are looking better and better, my takeoffs, everything's coming together, I feel comfortable in the air. It truly inspires pilot confidence. The moment you step in and you feel this kind of elegant touch on the inside, but this brutal power in front of the aircraft, yeah, that just gives you big excitement. One of the most important things is to enter the aircraft. So what is the feeling and what is the experience if you enter the aircraft? Most aircraft, their doors open like regular car doors and it's just a normal event. Guy-wing doors were famous from the Mercedes SL300. This was one of the first things we wanted to incorporate because when the pilot approaches the aircraft, he's opening the door. When you open these gull-wing doors, it's just like a little magic moment, like, oh, come enter the diamond world. So there we want to give him really large entries, front and back. We had different doors at the beginning, but it was clear that we want to make something in premium class and it needs to have carving doors. The gold wing doors became a, a trademark of diamond. Not only they look great, they make the aircraft very accessible. Large cabin, large doors. And very easy to get in, very easy to get out. The DA50 is designed really as like a luxury SUV. Everything that you would find in a car to make a long road trip an easy experience, you're also going to find in the DA50. Just the interior detailing seems very refined, very European, very BMW, Mercedes. These seats are produced by a company called Wolfsdorf in Austria and Croatia. Everything is hand selected, handcrafted, seating and stitching. The quality of design, as well as the materials that are selected, completely different level of luxury. Very high quality leathers, we've got carbon fiber finishes and touches all throughout. There are no compromises with this aircraft. The aircraft's interior was very well thought out. The creature comforts right from a water bottle to a handy little pocket to keep a, a small notebook for accepting clearances from ATC. This aircraft has five seats and it's wide enough for two adults to sit side by side in the front without having to touch elbows. It's comfortable, it's the same interior as the DA-62, so it's the largest cabin for a single piston aircraft. You have space for days <laughs> in that aircraft. I'm Fritz and I buy for me and my family a diamond day of 50. That's, that's a big dream when you have your own airplane. I'm a big man and, and tall, and most airplane is too small for me. This airplane is a zero compromise airplane when it comes to space. You won't find anything any bigger, and you can put little tiny people in it, or you can put great A extra large size people in it, and they're all comfortable. It's fine and dandy to have a go-fast airplane, but you can't move inside of it. 
This airplane's like the difference between the sports car and the SUV. By the planes you have to roll in and out of, these you step into, as opposed to rolling in or rolling out. You don't have to be uh, a contortionist to get in and out of these planes. We three sit in back and the door was closed. And I mean, if, uh, as for it's... The door was closed. Yeah, the door was <laughs> closed and we say, yeah, if it's an hour and a half flight, this would be okay. In case you need to take that extra passenger, here's the plane that can do it. And for baggage, you have place too, a big place. Not only that you fit five people, but behind the five people, you still have plenty of space to put in luggage. So going skiing, golfing, or anywhere with the family. The rear door, the baggage door, it's huge. You can put your golf clubs, your four adults, and go. The family pet, which we find more traveling these days. You find people putting mountain bikes back there. Uh, you've got room to put you know, the larger things that you never would have thought, bring in your plane and, and, and go. I think this is the most spacious single-engine aircraft I've ever flown. It gives you comfort that you will usually only find in twin engine. It is a pleasure to travel. It is like first class lumbar support to full recline to wide cushy seats, great visibility. It just makes for just such a magic experience. Where you have a lot of leg room, you have a lot of head room, your arms comfortably fit to both of your sides. You fit into the aircraft easily, even if you're a bigger person. I mean, uh, look at Martin, can easily fit into our DA50. The long wingspan and flexibility of the carbon fiber wings, they can absorb a lot of the oscillations that you have in the atmosphere. Especially for people that are not accustomed to, to flying small aircrafts, it's much more similar to flying a large commercial airline. As a passenger, I don't want to be cramped. I don't want to feel claustrophobic. I want nice open windows. I want to be able to open my own door. I want to be able to get out or feel like I can get out if I need to. And I think it gives you all of that. How much luggage you can put in this aircraft? It's really the perfect aircraft for family flight. The DA-50 has room to grow. It has room for the family and room for the family to grow as well. This aircraft has everything that the DA-62 would offer, but with a single engine on it. So you don't need to think about getting your extra rating to fly this aircraft. You can just step in and go. DA-62 and DA-50 has the same body. It's the same cabin size. Carried the thought that they had in the DA-62 and improved on it. They've made it a little more ergonomical with, with some of the changes. Environmental controls. Yeah, electric rudder trim on the FedEx control. It's like the DA-62, it wants to fly, at the same time it's, uh, it wants to land. It's going to have the very similar landing characteristics than the 62, which is simple and forgiving. Due to the function of calendar time, we've had the, the luxury of being able to put some additional design changes, incorporate some additional technical improvements to the airplane. The airplane will give you all of the things that you're looking for in the DA-62, but it will have a lower initial cap cost, and then the maintenance cost, because there is only one engine to service, is going to be lower as well. So your direct operating costs per hour are going to be less than the DA-62. Moving from a DA-40 to a DA-50, you're probably going to feel weird for about 30 seconds before you never want to go back. <laughs> It's a much wider cabin. You have a much faster aircraft than the 40. You're gonna feel right at home in terms of engine controls, same avionics. Everything's gonna feel like it's in the right place, in the right position. It's like changing from an economic car to a luxury one. I don't think anyone that has done that wants to go back or needed more than 30 seconds to get accustomed to the luxury. <laughs> Airplanes tend to become more complicated with more power. They get more knobs, they get more buttons, and it's different with the DA-50. It's still really not too complex to fly it. The transition from a DA-40 to a DA-50 is really easy. The DA-50 is the perfect next step, and the transition is going to be so seamless from one plane to the other. That's a dream. That's a dream, a big dream. I think 40 years ago, I think every time I will, one time I will learn to fly. But I don't have time, I have family and hobbies and working and don't time. And then after I, I learned and, and I think that's, that's a big dream when you have your own airplane. 
That's a nice dream. People really love the personalization that you can put into this aircraft. When it comes to picking your exterior and the appearance of the aircraft, we've done some very unique things and it will really help you put that personal flair on your aircraft. Your plane, made for you, specially made for you, that dream, it's coming true. For some of these people, it's a dream. For a lot of them, they've been entrepreneurs, they've built their businesses, and this is kind of the next level in their lives, personally and professionally. So it truly gives them a way to get home to their family in the evenings, to expand their business and to grow. So it's, it's definitely cool. It's cool to be part of. I like to explore the world or, or Europe or America before I do with my car or with my motorcycle and now the next step is flying. I'm Matt. I'm Robin. And we're flying the Diamond DA50 around the world. I don't think there's one person that is interested in aviation that somehow hasn't harbored that thought somewhere that wouldn't that be a fun thing to do? You know, I want to be the, the modern day world explorer. But it's imminently doable and you don't have to do anything to the plane. You simply get in it and go. The plane is just robust in the way that it's built. Really an opportunity to open up even more airfields for them to fly into some places that maybe you wouldn't take a competitor. Being able to go into the Himalayas just is a different level and the Andes in South America, it's even higher. With the 300 horsepower twin turbo, it'll climb in and out of the mountains just fine. You won't have any problem going in and out of Leadville, the highest airport in North America. We just realized the privilege that, that we have to fly a private airplane where basically, well, nobody flies. To, to take a route by the Easter Islands that would not be possible without the Jet Day 1 capability. Of the DA-50, we have all the newest navigation equipment. We have the communication with the built-in satellite phone, which is just essential if you're in remote areas. While your average person wouldn't do that, what it does do is that it proves that I can probably go 500 miles to see Grandma if that guy can fly this plane around the world. The DA-50 burns jet fuel like most of our other aircraft in our lineup. 100 low lead is still contributing to 70% of airborne lead contaminants in the U.S. We expect that the Environmental Protection Agency will put an end to leaded fuels altogether at some point in the very near future. So the fact that we're burning Jet A has no lead content is certainly an advantage as we move ahead. We have better availability, less cost for the fuel, it's more efficient, and we completely keep the lead out of the environment. In the DA-50, you're burning 20 to 25 percent less fuel than you would in a competitor aircraft, and your trade-off is just a little bit less speed. So if you're looking at a trip from Dallas to Austin, for example, you'd be about five minutes slower than a competing aircraft. I don't think a single pilot that has flown a FADEC controlled aircraft ever wants to go back to a non-FADEC controlled aircraft. <laughs> A lot of people like the idea of having a twin turbo V6 on their aircraft. You have it on your car, why not have it on your aircraft? Trying to start an old gasoline engine and it's backfiring and you're pumping the, the, the mixture, trying to get it right. <laughs> None of that. It literally feels like you're getting into a modern car and starting up. Once having used FADEC, doesn't matter if you're in an airliner environment or flying biz jets, you appreciate the system because there's no more, you know, car heat and RPM setting and throttle plate and leaning and that kind of stuff. It's just, you know, zero, 100% power. You say what you want or you set what you want with one lever. Massive advantage. All the conventional engines, they look straight out of the 50s. The CD300 Continental had come out and designed something entirely new, something kind of revolutionary. Diamond Engineering and Continental Engineering have been very, very closely working together on this program. I think it's a perfect match for the DA-50. The customer that wants to fly these airplanes is used to a high standard, 
this is the latest and greatest engine for such an application. State-of-the-art facility, a lot of the parts are manufactured in-house. Continental has been around for many years. We have produced over 7,500 uh, Jet-A engines. CD100 series, we have over 7 million flight hours. So, it's a proven technology. FADEC is two ECUs. They both work together at all times and talk to each other. They control fuel, control all the pressures, all the temperatures. You can uh, start the engine basically by just switching on the master. You will not have to fiddle around with those additional pumps. Easily, smoothly press the button and the FADEC will make the engine come alive for you. So much information that's being downloaded, recorded. A pilot will very rarely ever be surprised by an engine event. It also then provides the data log, which makes it for easy maintenance. You plug in your cable, you send the data to the service center, and you can see very quickly what needs to be troubleshot. It's almost like operating a jet. It's like operating your car. It takes the pilot workload to a different level. The electronic control unit in the aircraft, you're only putting in the amount of fuel that the engine actually needs at that moment in order to create the right amount of power. In a lot of cases, older engines are ineffective because they put too much fuel into the cylinder, and a lot of that fuel ends up just traveling through the exhaust system and out the tailpipe as a hydrocarbon. The specific fuel consumption is very impressive at a 0.355 pounds per horsepower per hour. It's one of the benefits a compression ignition diesel engine provides. Turbocharged aircraft from the old technology are very high pressurized, big block engine aircraft. There's a lot of disadvantages that come with that style of turbo. You burn more, you have more maintenance, you worry more about engine management and cooling. But all the diamonds are turbocharged FADEC control, which means I have no engine management as a pilot to do. I can fly at high altitudes, and it's the most efficient way to do it. It's a critical altitude of 8,000 feet and the service ceiling of the DA-50 with that engine is 20,000 feet. So it gives you that altitude performance. The engine is rated for 300 horsepower takeoff and 270 horsepower continuous flight. It is a very powerful engine on takeoff, but on the other hand, as soon as you get up in cruise and you reduce the power, the engine becomes very, very silent. It becomes a very pleasant airplane to fly. You don't feel a lot of vibrations in the cabin at all. We have a gear reduction of 1.66 with a slower turning propeller, a lower noise. So it's a very quiet engine. It's a very smooth experience. The engine is liquid cooled, which gives it a very stable cooling. Radiators, um, similar to your car, really. In a traditional air-cooled engine, you would find cool cylinders at the front and hot cylinders at the back. With the DA-50's liquid-cooled engines, the ability to distribute the heat throughout the entire engine block will keep the engine at a constant temperature from front to back. The engine is equipped with two alternators. The alternators are providing the electrical turn, not only for the engines, for the electronic controls, but also for some of the aircraft features, such as the air conditioning. It's one of the benefits to have two alternators in the integrated system with the Diamond aircraft. Every engine that we build, we test. We test it through a very rigorous process to make sure that all the parameters of that engine are functioning properly. There's a lot of testing goes on in altitude and uh, cold climate and heat. The tolerance that we use in aerospace for our engines are the tens of thousands of inches. To certify and to develop these engines, we have to think about every regime every environmental arena that these airplanes, the DA-50, are flying in. They we're putting thousands of hours on these engines, so by the time the consumer sees it, they've been in development for a long time. they them flying around the world. We have a very extensive service network, and we're expanding that, obviously, in conjunction with Diamond with their customers. The initial TBR, time between replacement, is 1,200. We have a plan in place to increase that fairly rapidly for the customers. Continental has had the same path with the CD100 engines. 
and we successfully increased those to 2100 uh, hours TBR. So we're very confident to get to a higher TBR very quickly. To minimize downtime where the customer sends the engine back after they receive the new one. It's ready in the shop, waiting for it, and you swap them. It's really all about minimized downtime, it's about convenience, and you get a brand new engine every time you reach that TBR, time between replacement. Our partnership with Diamond is just bringing workload reducing technologies to pilots in the G1000 NXI system for the DA50 RG. Just look at the features it gives you as a private pilot. This is just mind blowing. You can do so many things, you can control the aircraft in so many manners, which aren't even available on an Airbus. Actually, you can fly the DA50, you fly speed vector. What you would do as a pilot, you would set the cruise speed that you want to go, and the power setting is the resulting variable. Trend vector or speed vector show you whether you're trending to speed up or whether you're trending to slow down. And whenever you see that trend vector disappear, you know that you're going to stay at that specific airspeed. The keypad, which you have in the center, which once you use it, I would assume you would never go back to using the knobs. If you look in the DA50 cockpit, actually will flip out from the armrest. It's a really cool implementation uh, like you'd find in an aircraft uh, like Part 25 market. Instead of going here and having to go letter by letter, scrolling you know, left and right, here you actually have an alphanumeric keypad and you just punch in the letters. And in this manner you could put in all the waypoints you need for your flight plan. Coming from a legacy G1000 system is an easy transition into G1000 NXI. Absolutely no special training or anything like that. We've kept the button and knob ology the same. It's a very seamless transition. Synthetic vision is a big situational awareness enhancer, so you can see all of the 3D terrain and airports environments directly on the primary flight display. Surface Watch technology kind of stacks on top of our safe taxi technology to give you a little bit more awareness in the terminal environment. Things like, hey, you're on runway 22 or you're on taxiway hotel, enhancing their situational awareness on the ground. Electronic stability protection. If there's ever an inadvertent flight into IMC or you get into an unusual attitude, one press of the level key will roll wings level as well as bring your pitch back to zero pitch attitude. The yaw damper capability is a great workload reducer, especially if you're traveling with passengers in the back and that tail starts to wag just a little bit. Hitting that yaw damper really just helps smooth everything out. We do have fuel rendering capability, both to fuel exhaustion and to your reserves. You can see at different power settings that range dynamically adjust. Support for Sirius XM weather. That also provides additional capability like radio entertainment in the cockpit. So my wife always loves to listen to the radio while we fly, uh, rather than listen to me talk on the radio. The FISB weather, which is that free ADSB weather that's uploaded from the ground station. So we integrate both of those in the G1000 NXI system on the DA50. There's also an option for worldwide weather data link, which also provides some other benefits like texting and voice calling to stay in connection with other ones on the ground. It's a perfect system to do something like fly around the world. Map rendering happens instantaneously. You can actually select VFR charts, IFR low, or IFR high charts, and you see we're still actually overlaying traffic on that moving map page with those charts. You don't sacrifice any situational awareness. We also have the flexibility of loading Jeppesen approach charts on here. We also support checklist capability. If the pilot wants to hand fly, but just wants to be told, hey, this is your pitch reference, you can do that with the flight director. It'll give you that navigation guidance. If you just nest that attitude indicator under the flight director, you'll actually follow the flight path that you've loaded into the system. IFR flying is always a challenge uh, in, in any aircraft, but the GFC 700 coupled with the uh, Garmin G1000 NXI just makes that workload incredibly easy. 
Garmin's GFC 700 Autopilot that we've integrated into the DA50 uh, has a number of advanced features. It'll do fully coupled approaches and fully coupled missed approaches, reducing that pilot workload and just trying to make those stressful situations like a go around easier. With G1000 NXI, we have all of the charts actually built into the system. It's very simple to actually pull up a dedicated chart for that approach by hitting the chart soft key on the MFD display. That chart is actually linked to the flight plan that you have loaded. So if you have an approach in that flight plan, it's automatically gonna bring up the RNAV runway nine approach that we have loaded. So there's no actual selection of the specific chart that you need. Localizer, ILS, VOR approaches will actually load the appropriate nav frequency in the nav box here. And upon reaching the appropriate point in the approach, we will actually automatically switch that frequency into the active. So there's no longer gonna be any ambiguity on whether or not you've actually loaded the appropriate localizer or ILS frequency and activated it. It will actually turn, shoot the approach down to minimums. I'm currently working on my instrument rating and I know instrument flying is one of the harder aspects of flying you would think, but it's almost like you're not even having to do much work. Diamond has really put together with Garmin an interface that is just very intuitive. Faster processing speed, smoother map panning, which really gives us availability to do additional functionalities in the future. And we're gonna be able to support technology growth for years to come. The Diamond aircraft, they have such low accident rates compared to the rest of the G8 fleet that it's nearly unfair that an insurance company would charge the same premium for a Diamond as it would charge for a different manufacturer. They are the closest thing in terms of safety that you can get as to flying on an airline, on a GA aircraft. A diamond aircraft, safety is in our DNA and this is not just a, a, a little sentence that looks nice and sounds nice, it is where we are coming from. If we go back to the founding days, we're simply concepts. And over the years and the several decades that have passed of the fleet in the field, the founding DNA, if you will, has proved to be 100% right. This philosophy was in every design and construction of every single diamond plane, and even with the DF-50. The simplicity of operation with a FADEC controlled engine, it's single lever, it's a push button engine start, it's a push button ground test. And I think for those pilots and owners these days that are not flying as much as corporate pilots or commercial pilots, it's gonna be easy for them to stay current and safe in the airplane. Diamond built the world's best control system for a light aircraft with a special push rod control system ailerons that go all the way to the tips that are long and big long flaps. The standby instrumentation is always in the center. You're either training in the clouds or if you had an actual avionics emergency in the clouds, you don't have to move your head too much. You're not looking down and around in a spot for the backup instrumentation. In aviation, there's a really awful thing sometimes with older airplanes where you'll survive a crash, but then you'll die of smoke inhalation or of a post-crash fire. In the diamonds, they protect the fuel. So it's a metal tank between the spars and it's also steel braided flexible fuel lines. So in a crash situation, you don't end up with a fuel leak that causes a fire. Only needed one spar, but they built two so they could create a protected space. Crushable aluminum cells. The goal was to get rid of fires and aircraft. Big deal, it saves a lot of lives. The occupant protection design that they built in, many aircraft of the past, they'd have issues with the seat tracks. By mounting the seats into a special position underneath 26G roll bar. The seats are designed with crash elements under them so that in a worst case scenario, the airframe will absorb the impact, not your back. Diamond uh, DF50 features a full carbon fiber composite uh, fuselage, a monocoque structure. So in the unlikely case of crash, you as occupants will have the maximum safety available from a structural point of view. Another thing that I love about this airplane is that passengers on both sides have their own emergency exit door. If, God forbid, something were to happen and you need to get out fast, you're gonna be able to do that. When you're closing those doors, uh, all you have to do is push that red handle down. 
It's visual, it's tactile input. You can't miss the fact that your door is not closed because you'd have a handle in the way, so it really does add to the safety as well. Ground handling is quite nice with the airplane, especially on the runway. It doesn't have a tendency some high-performance singles have where it wants to go off the runway because of the amount of torque. You have the, an aircraft that is inherently safe to fly because it's docile. It's very hard to get it in a flight situation where you would lose control over it. Investigations have shown that turning stalls are still responsible for a majority of the accidents that happen in general aviation. One of the most dangerous transitions in flying situation is after takeoff and you're making your first crosswind turn. Generally going to be nose up, lower air speeds, higher power settings, so you're going to be battling the torque from the propeller, so you're generally close to the stall. But even if you get into a stall with a DA-50 power on in a turn, the aircraft will be controllable all around its lateral axis. I've tried it out quite a bit. I had a flight where I basically didn't do anything else than stalls for more than three hours. Even in the uh, most critical situations that I could come up with, the aircraft was always very well behaving and very well recoverable. Diamonds are designed perfectly for slow flight. This is where sometimes aircraft have trouble. Many aircraft, you get to the edge, you get slow, it drops and it can be very abrupt. What's different about every diamond is it never really stops flying. Tips of the wings are designed to never lose all their lift. That is the safety characteristics of the aerodynamic design of a diamond wing. So stalls, you just simply come down like a leaf. Like literally you could put her in a stall and almost hover on a spot, just have like a very low airspeed and gently, without any violent movement around the, any axis of the aircraft, you just kind of gently stall her and she would lose altitude. But you could probably come down in the stalling attitude all the way to the ground. And that just shows brilliant stability. My husband learned to fly. He actually ordered a new diamond. We had several other manufacturers aircraft available to us, but I wanted him in the safest plane in the sky. So we ordered one for him to learn to fly. For the Diamond brand, it is that standard of safety. It's that level of quality. It always makes me feel so comfortable selling the aircraft. I've had the unfortunate experience of having clients go down. You know, if you've done this long enough, it's gonna happen. So um, it always is reassuring to sell them the Diamond aircraft because it is the safest plane in the sky. There are planes with parachutes, and there's an immediate assumption that somehow that plane would automatically be safer. As we've transitioned to newer and newer technology, it started to become an odd thought. It's like if I sold you a plane and gave you a parachute to wear, would that make the plane safer? Diamond has racked up the world's greatest safety record by a multiple of three to five times better than average. There's nothing better. So parachute or no parachute, it's not about one piece of device, it's about the entire flying qualities of the aircraft, controllability, and all the details of how they designed it to be the world's safest. All we have to do is look at our history, absent of ballistic recovery parachutes in any diamond model over the last almost 30 years. Hands down, without question, through a whole range of different types of operations, whether it be commercial use, private flying, hands down, statistically, the safest airplanes built are built by Diamond, absent of a ballistic recovery chute. It's extremely rare that you have serious accidents in airplanes. If you look at the total number of operations and the hundreds and thousands, millions of hours that they operate, and the numbers of incidents, you compare that with the carnage that goes on on the highways on a daily basis that we never hear about. To me, safety side of things, the industry in general, ballistic recovery shoot or not, is head and shoulders above the things that we normally see in our day-to-day -day lives. Diamond safety record kind of lends itself to not needing a parachute. Typically, Clients coming in looking at the aircraft have already done their homework, so we're not having a lot of conversations of why doesn't it have a parachute. 
the honest answer is they don't feel like it needs one. You know, their safety record speaks for itself. My favorite part of the 50, I love the double slotted flaps. I'm from the stall community from Alaska. Double slotted flaps on the experimental kind of bush plane allow for much slower flight, much more stable flight. The flaps on the 50 are the same kind of flaps that are using large jets, like airlines or large business jets. And they increase the wing area when you're about to land. It decreases the wing loading. So that makes the aircraft very, very docile at low speeds and very, very hard to actually stall it. If you fly anywhere in the winter, it is definitely scary to think about, you know, I might run through an icing layer and I might need to get through. The diamond, you can take off, you retract the gear so the gear's not hanging down, picking up icing, turn on the pumps for the TKS system, it coats all over the wings. The props definitely have a tendency to picking up icing a little quicker. The prop itself is heated, use it just like pedo heat. With the flick of a switch in the cockpit, the pilot is adding an electrical current to uh, a heating element on the propeller blades, and then that will prevent any ice accumulation on the prop. With that big horizontal stabilizer at the back of the aircraft, you've got additional stability, along with the long wings and the ailerons that are all the way outboard, the vortex generators on the aircraft. The controllability of the airplane is very predictable and very safe. What we did in Alaska in the winter is we'd have to plug them in, leave them in the hangar, put, we even put blankets around the engine to keep it as warm as possible, and we had very few chances to start it. Diamond start really easy, start just like a car. Even in cold weather, the glow plug cycle and the engine just turns over. Seeing that the aircraft is a twin turbo and, and uh, can't fly into the flight levels, uh, oxygen is an option. The air condition is on a separate alternator. You can switch on the air conditioning as soon as the motor is on, anytime, at any point in flight. Peter tube, yeah, we opted to have it uh, mounted on the far side of the wing in order to have an undisturbed airflow. We're not only using the dynamic pressure of the pitot tube, but also the static pressure. So the difference in between the indicated airspeed and the true airspeed that you're flying will be very small in compared to other systems. We regard DA-50 as a big step from our DA-40 and G. It's something like uh, you develop from BMW X1 to X6, so it's a big step. Our aim is really for this aircraft is to those pilots to love flying and like extraordinary luxury aircraft. really European style company because they are really concentrated on good quality. They are not pursuing for a large big scale of volume but really a best product. There are things which Diamond came up with even after Fritz has given the okay for the airframe where you just realize, okay, it's not because they have any commercial interest, but because they really want to help you out as a member of their Diamond family. Gratified to see that the founding principles of, of safety, now that the company is under a new ownership, we're not going to compromise occupant safety for anything. Been has been the driving force at Diamond to invest, to design and build and bring to market the DA-50 and tweak it as time goes by to make it relevant, to make it right. That's what progress is all about. It's nice to know that it will continue to be and always will be like that. I think it's the, the all, all is, is, is very, very good. It's the, a very good quality for inside, outside. It's, I think it's one of the best airplane you can buy. We have brought so many innovations and so many passion into the aircraft. It's really a big aircraft and it's so stable and so smooth in the air. It gives you everything what a pilot wants. Yeah, my family is, of course, very proud.
behind the father and one boy. He was already sitting in the DA50. He was turning on the master switch and it was getting loud and he was scared. <laughs> yeah, so that, that was really an amazing moment, yeah. I'm a proud of the product itself because I know what was the effort in each area. I can't tell, oh, this is my favorite part, is a great engineering state of art. Our first serial production airplane, the part that we watched it from our windows in the office upstairs, and it's like a piece of us, like going somewhere. It's awe inspiring to me to see the amount of human capital and talent and creativity that has gone into the advancement of aviation technology at the level of the DA-50. I would have to say it's the technology that draws us together. It's like a Tesla, you get attracted to a technology and an advancement that makes sense. It has the right why. Beginnings with Christian, he brought a passion to the industry. It was more about the airplanes. Somebody once said that if, if you enjoy what you're doing, you'll never work a day in your life. And so I think if you have a passion for what you're doing, it's not just a job. Uh, we do it because we enjoy it. The best moments are when customers approach us They've owned the airplane for a while, and they come back and, and they refer to themselves as a member of the Diamond family. That means the most. Flying it makes me feel so alive. There are a few things in life that give you a feeling of complete peace, while also providing that adrenaline rush of, oh my goodness, I can't believe this is actually my life. When you're up there in a Diamond, you're looking out on these beautiful long wings. You're above the clouds. You're going at a great speed and you're feeling like you're in your own personal airliner. You're able to have this incredible flying experience all while knowing you're flying the safest GA plane in the world. They don't do anything the same way everybody else does. The courage has paid off. The original founder and all of the people who have been involved over the years and the, you know, and the current management and ownership of the company are pushing that forward and they just, there's no stopping it. I wouldn't be selling Diamond if I didn't believe in the brand, the product, the aircraft. My own family flies in a Diamond aircraft and I think that says a lot. For me, it's, that's the element of aviation. You, you connect people with it and being able to see my family in combination with the trip, one of the most important stops, because it really comes to show what aviation does, and it's, it's connecting societies, it's connecting people, not just face to face, but you can actually also give your loved ones and your relatives a hug rather than just FaceTiming them. So yeah, that's, that will be a really sentimental stop.